I'm currently working on this open source fish finder sonar project, whatever, and I just got my first bot working, and this is very exciting. So, this is an Arduino shield with a TUSS. 4470 from Texas Instruments. This is a um, small IC that can be used to control ultrasonic transducers like these piezo transducers, just like these. Um, this one is tuned for around 10 kilohertz or something, and this is actually from a smoke detector. So this can be used for ultrasonic, um, but can be used to emit uh, like hearable uh, tone. For ultrasonic stuff, you need more high frequency transducers. Um, for example, inside this container is a 200 kilohertz transducer submerged in olive oil. And I used this to um, test my first prototype, which is a commercial uh, fish finder unit that uh, uses a 200 kilohertz transducer. But because I bought this used, um, I didn't have the transducer, so I put my own. And this actually worked underwater. What I did, I um, used an Arduino Uno or my FastLogic board version one to um, read the raw output from the from the receiver or from the um, amplifier part of the circuit and plotted it in a um, Python uh, chart to see the raw echoes from the fish finder unit. But the downside of this is you have all this um, stuff you don't really need. All the um, signal processing or the, the driving and receiving stuff happens on, on the upper part of this board. Um, so everything below this um, IC that also controls the LC monitor is not used uh, except this 200 kilohertz square wave signal generator. I already got it working with the 40 kilohertz transducer that looks like this. This is actually a commercial transducer that is used in cars sometimes or you can buy it for a few bucks on AliExpress. And this is useful in air. Usually if you go underwater you use higher frequencies like 200 kilohertz at least. The benefit of having a low frequency is that it travels further, but if you want to have higher resolutions, for example, you want to see smaller details, you usually use higher frequencies. The TAS4470 actually supports frequencies between 40 kHz and 1 GHz. The problem is that you always have to tune or change capacitor values to tune the internal uh, filtering. Um, what I did, I just used two capacitor values and used jumpers to select the, uh, each frequency because I only have transducers for 40 kHz and 200 kHz. If I want to later use different frequencies, I also can add another jumper and solder my uh, custom capacitor for uh, the, the frequency I want to drive. The TAS4470 works by sending a small burst of uh, energy into the transducer. In my case, eight cycles of a square wave that looks like this. The yellow part is the drive signal I set to the uh, TAS from my Arduino. And the Arduino can actually generate quite fast frequencies, but to make them precise it's a little bit harder. So I'm currently working on this. For 40 kHz this is no problem, but for 200 kHz this starts to become a problem. Currently I'm only able to generate a drive frequency of around 160 kHz, but the transducer uh, needs a drive frequency of around 220 kHz. To find out the exact frequency my transducer needs, I can ring the transducer and measure directly on the output here to the transducer and see what the ringing uh, behavior of the transducer is. So if I zoom into this part, I can actually see the exact frequency the transducer is ringing at. So if I zoom in and watch the frequency, the blue signal, I can see it's 227 kilohertz and not 200 kilohertz as the manufacturer stated. But this is due to the construction of this transducer set. This can change depending on how you uh, embed the transducer in your circuit or in your, your transducer unit. So if you, for example, attach a large piece of metal, the frequency will change. You can buy these uh, transducers for air very cheaply for a few bucks. These. Uh, This is only a few bucks, uh, 21 euros or something, two euros or something. These only run at 40 kilohertz and you can't really change something about this. Um, so everything so everything that is a little bit more special, um, for example, if you want to have different transducer shapes or different frequencies, you have to build something on your own. To get this, this is actually quite hard. There is, as far as I am concerned, no real open source project around ultrasonic stuff. I've seen some people building uh, underwater sonars, but this is a lot of analog and analog tech is not really, uh, or it's harder to um, to get right and to tune and you need more experience to, to work with that. So having a platform that is uh, using a standard ultrasonic 
transducer chip like the TUS4470 should help getting people excited and uh, work on ultrasonic stuff themselves. The other thing is um, I mentioned special transducer shapes. For example, these are very, very large transducer discs compared to these very small transducer chips inside these um, cheap modules or the one I have in my uh, ultrasonic transducer but also very strange shapes like this one, for example. These are four transducers that have a rectangular shape and emit not like a flashlight like these two, but they emit like a beam in a certain direction. So the beam can be like one degree um, of width and like 90 degrees uh, in the other direction. You need this if you want to build a side scan sonar, for example. Talking about side scan sonar and exciting sonar stuff, these transducer discs and shapes I got from Michael. Michael is the CEO of Kogga and Kogga is building very affordable uh, underwater sonars for robotics hobbyists and he was kind enough to send me two of his products and he actually uh, recommended the TUS4470 to me which is very cool because now I have a working um, ultrasonic circuit. Um, the two products I have from him are two um, sonar modules. One is a standard module that just points uh, an echo beam in different kilohertz ranges like a flashlight down and you can program it using the Kogga um, app which is very cool. I can show a few videos of And the other one is a side scan sonar type. And this is very very cool and actually quite affordable for what it can do. This basically sends out a beam that looks like this. So in this direction it's 90 degrees but in this direction it's only one degree. So when I point this into a certain direction I can only see what is in this beam and I get a waterfall chart or a echogram um, from only this area and this makes possible to take captures or 3D captures of a lake surface for example and see certain features on the ground. And if you move this you can even get a full 3D picture of the lake which is insane to me. And this is actually quite affordable stuff and you definitely should check it out and I'm super grateful to have this from him and for the recommendations and tips and everything he provided uh, to make this project possible. What I will do with this one, the side scan sonar type, I'm currently working on this um, dive computer basically or dive sonar um, that has this um, transducer built in this one and it will display the echo data on a large seven inch display and uses a raspberry pi to get the data and to display it on the screen i have this uh, transducer connected to the to the front side and a raspberry pi on the back get the data from the uh, echo sounder or the from the, from the side scan sonar from a gyroscope to get the direction of the of the beam and to display it on the on the screen and this all has to be waterproof, so this is a CNC machined case uh, with a big o-ring seal, a few screws to hold the lid on the on the case, uh, four buttons using Hull effect sensors and magnets to detect the position without having to penetrate through the uh, waterproof chamber. This is whole assembly, this is a Raspberry Pi in the display. On the top these are the four buttons with magnets uh, here and here. These are the Hull effect sensors. Um, yeah, still need to uh, finish this board that is basically a bridge board to connect different sensors to, uh, to the Raspberry Pi to, uh, for example, connect this uh, magnetic uh, rotary encoder for some uh, input. Three lithium batteries, uh, battery charger, battery management stuff. Um, and there's also a <laughs> small uh, bicycle or car valve uh, thing to add pressurized air into the system to prevent any water from getting in. And also to test if everything is waterproof. I'm just using this uh, very cheap gland to get the cable out to the transducer, but still in progress, not, uh, the, the case is not finished. And I'm still working on the software for the, uh, to read the, the data from the side scan sonar from the gyroscope and from all these uh, button inputs to display something meaningful on the screen. So the idea is to basically have a, a radar screen that is like 45 degrees or something uh, to the front to see if there are some uh, echoes. Yeah, but this is still in progress and not very finished, but I'm also working on this. So if you're excited about this, uh, leave a like, subscription, follow, comment, whatever. So back to the stuff that is actually working. TAS4470 Arduino shield for the ultrasonic transducer. So I wrote a small um, Arduino example to drive the TAS4470 and a Python example to show the raw data from the um, received signal from the transducer. So I will just connect the transducer very quick. The yellow channel is connected to pin 9, pulse generation channel on the Arduino. The blue channel is connected to analog 0, which is connected to the amplified and filtered output of the TAS4470. I will just um, 
So the yellow channel is the trigger channel or the, the pulse generation channel. So on the beginning of the trigger, I have this uh, 40 kilohertz pulse, eight cycles, and then the TAS4470 starts its uh, sampling process or amplification process or capturing process. And this is uh, also the moment where the Arduino uh, starts the sampling process on pin A0. And if I zoom out, like a little bit, I can see the blue channel, which is connected to the uh, analog zero pin on the Arduino. This is a return signal or the amplified return signal uh, on the transducer. So if I take the transducer and put my finger on it, you can see the signal changes quite a bit. And if I point the transducer up, you can see an echo here. And if I, uh, this is the echo from the ceiling actually, and if I move the transducer up, you can see the uh, echo comes back faster. And if I move it down, it uh, takes more time to come back. And after each capture, um, this Arduino takes uh, 300 samples, and every sample takes around 112 microseconds. This equals to around 1.8 centimeters in air, and in water it would be uh, 8 centimeters approximately. After this sample has been captured, I send it uh, through USB or through serial to my Python backend. That looks like this. Um, here you can already see the lines from the uh, from the echoes or the echo lines. This is basically the blind zone of the transducer, so everything that happens here you can't see. Um, and if I move this like so, so this is pointing uh, to the air right now, uh, you can see like pretty clearly that you have an echo from the ceiling, and also the second reflection here, and also some uh, I don't know where these reflections come from, maybe from the desk. I put this on my desk like so. You can see like multi reflections between the desk and the and the floor, like I don't know, ten, maybe maybe ten reflections. And you can also see like smaller details, like for example, if I point in this direction, you can see this is noise right now. So, oops. And even if I put it in like other dis uh, directions, like so, you can even see like noise from multiple reflections of multiple objects. So for example, if I point it in this direction through the room, I should be able to see like one reflection from stuff on my desk, which is like down here, and other reflections from the wall on the other side. So this is what the bot looks like. This is an Arduino Uno shield or Arduino shield that is also compatible to Arduino Mega or any other Arduino type board. Uh, this just stacks on the Arduino Uno in my case. Using the Arduino, I can control the uh, TAS4470 um, ultrasonic transducer driver. For the connection to the TAS4470, you need SPI um, from the Arduino. Um, for that, I use the standard SPI interface uh, using uh, pin uh, 10 to 13, so 10 for chip select and the rest for the normal SPI uh, pins. Uh, and for GPIO pins uh, that are connected to 5, 6, 8, and 9, uh, pin 9 is used to generate the driver frequency from the Arduino. So it's basically just a digital write uh, high and low not exactly, but it's uh, quite fast uh, digital write high and low because the Arduino digital write is actually quite slow and not as fast as you would expect. Uh, but through some tricks you get um, actually quite high frequencies. I think I got uh, 600 kilohertz at least and I haven't tried like the uh, full frequency. Um, so there's uh, definitely the, the Arduino is capable of generating fast enough signals um, to drive different transducers up to 1000 kilohertz but it usually is not super precise at the, at the higher end. The rest is just an analog out on the TAS4470 that is connected to analog zero on the Arduino pin. Um, this is for the echo reception, basically. So the, the Arduino starts up, then it configures the TAS4470 to the specific frequency it should uh, drive the transducer at. Uh, the, the voltage supply um, could be either uh, in, an internal 5 volt regulated uh, voltage supply, but also an external, in my case, for example, the VIN or the XC30 connector. Um, and then how many pulses the Arduino sets to the TAS4470. So the pulses um, are generated on pin 9 on the Arduino. And this is uh, exactly the frequency the transducer should be driven at. So in my case, for example, the 200 kilohertz or 40 kilohertz or 230 kilohertz or whatever I, I had uh, for the one transducer. Um, this is generated using a procedure around the digital right high and low because this is actually quite slow. Um, this is uh, this is using the, the clock frequency of the Atmega 328, the 16 megahertz clock frequency of the, of the Atmega 328 directly 
to generate uh, the signal by basically counting uh, cycles and then enabling and disabling pin 9. So you can generate much fi uh, faster frequencies uh, than compared to the digital write high and low. And then after the TAS4470 is uh, configured, then the Arduino goes into the infinite loop, triggers or tells the TAS um, to go into time of flight measurement mode. This is basically just primes the TAS to go into, uh, to, to start a new cycle. And this new uh, cycle is then started from the Arduino Uno by sending eight pulses of the frequency I want to drive the transducer out. So in my case, it's eight uh, low cycles. And then the TAS um, drives the transducer. And then after the eight cycle, uh, automatically switches into reception mode. And from there, it puts out the filtered and, and amplified echo from the transducer to the analog pin of the Arduino. Um, connected to A0 here. And then the Arduino tries to fetch all the data or reads all the data as fast as, as it can, which is actually not super uh, fast, so it's around 112 micro. So I just decided to uh, make this another video because this was quite an excessive uh, explanation of how the Arduino um, shield works. And uh, probably this is too long for this video, but I will post it in a few weeks and uh, explain further the details and what will happen next on this spot. So uh, stay tuned for that. So the idea was to get uh, your hands into ultrasonics and I think this goal has been uh, successfully reached. The next step is to build a more advanced board, maybe with onboard uh, with an onboard microcontroller, for example, an STM32 or an ESP32 with Wi-Fi capabilities, which would be very cool because then you have uh, the option to build a web backend or an app backend. And the other thing is to support different transducers. Uh, one is different frequencies for like the 40 kilohertz work well, uh, but the 200 kilohertz has some problems and the 600 kilohertz doesn't work at all currently. So different uh, frequency ranges, different filtering options, and also higher energy into the transducer. Currently the transducer of the TAS4470 uh, drives the transducer at 5 volts or 20 or the input voltage, so up to 24 volts. This is a problem because, especially for underwater applications, you need uh, quite a lot of energy to get a meaningful echo back. You can uh, amplify and read. So for underwater applications, you will probably need a transformer uh, to increase the transducer voltage, to increase the energy into the transducer, to increase the energy of the echo, um, to make it usable, usable reading. The problem with the transformer approach is that you need to build an LC circuit between the secondary coil and uh, uh, the capacitance of the transducer. So you basically have to match the uh, inductance of the coil with the capacitance of the transducer and the wire um, to form basically an LC circuit that resonates on the resonant or on the mechanical resonant frequency of the transducer disk, which is unfortunate because every time you change the transducer frequency or capacitance, um, you have to change another capacitor on the circuit, which is unfortunate and you need more measuring equipment for that which is uh, annoying. But still, I hope this was uh, somewhat useful to you. And if you like this, uh, please consider subscribing, even a like, a comment, a GitHub star, or whatever. So thank you very much. Uh, see you next time. Bye.